Hello everyone. Research students and researchers in general are often required to write summaries and critical summaries of research documents including research papers and research reports and research theses. In this presentation I would like to discuss what is a summary uh, what is a critical summary of research papers and what is the process of making a research paper summary and how is it different from making a critical research paper summary. These are some of the questions that we will answer, uh, try to find answers to in this uh, presentation. So let us first begin with the definition of what is a summary and what is a critical summary. A summary is a brief or shortened descriptive version of a research report which is in, in this case uh, a research paper or, uh, or a thesis. So a shortened or brief description the focus basically is on the description which actually means that um, a summary generally is a description of a research paper but a short and brief description of a research paper or a research thesis. On the other hand a critical summary is a brief or shortened version of a research report which is a research paper or a research thesis. But this version, the critical summary, actually goes beyond the mere description of, um, of the uh, mere brief description of the research paper. And it has elements of critique, which actually means that there is a level of analysis and evaluation and synthesis um, involved in the process of critical summary. So this is basically the difference between a summary and a critical summary. A summary is a brief shortened version of the research paper which is basically at the descriptive level while a critical summary is a brief shortened version of the research report or research paper which actually involves critique and that actually means that there is there is deeper level of analysis and evaluation involved in the process of a critical summary. Now what is involved actually in the process of a sum of making a summary? So there are certain central questions um, that we need to respond to when we are making a summary um, of a research report and in which in this case is a research paper. So these are the questions that we need to respond to while we are making a summary of a research report. That is a research paper or thesis. So the first one is who is our, what is basically the title of the research report. That is something that should be a part of the research summary. So generally we should begin with um, the identification of the research title. This is followed by who has actually authored the paper. Uh, this information should there be in the summary. Then the next information that the summary should have is what is the background of the study. In other words, um, the literature review is basically the background literature review is a part generally a part of research reports and so that is something that we need to refer to uh, briefly in the summary. Then what is the rationale of the study? Uh, in this case the research paper that is something that we will include uh, in, the, in the summary and then the response to the question, what if any research gap has been identified in the particular research paper? 
This is also an information that will be needed in the summary of a research paper. Then comes um, information related to the research design that has been adopted in the particular research paper that we are making a summary of it. So this will be an important aspect that needs to be covered in the summary. Then the main findings, conclusions, and implications of the study. So what are the main findings, conclusions, and implications of the study? This is something that should be briefly included in the summary. Then generally, so these, are, these were the central questions that we need to respond to while we are making a summary of a research paper. Um, generally, uh, people have this question also on their minds regarding the length of the, uh, of the summary of a research paper. So generally, it should be one-fourth of the original article, which actually means that if the article is around 6,000 words, so around 1,500, between 1,200 to 1,500 words, summary should be adequate. But there, this, there is no universal uh, rule, and there are certain summaries could be lo a bit longer, and certain summaries could be uh, a bit shorter than, than this. But this is something, uh, the range between 1,000 to 1,500 for a research paper of around 6,000 words will be something that will do justice to adequately representing the essence of the paper. Then um, the next consideration in terms of the length and in terms of the, the material that uh, uh, the content of the summary might also vary in line with requirements from professors or educational institutions or publishers who would want you a student or as a researcher to write summaries. So maybe professors have their own requirements, uh, both in terms of content and in terms of the length of summary. And similarly, educational institutions and publishers might also have their own requirements. So in line with those requirements, we can vary uh, our summary. Now we move on to the next uh, uh, more important uh, aspect of this presentation, and that actually is central questions revolving around critical summary. In other words, what questions we need to respond to in order to write good critical summaries? Well, basically, the central questions of the summary are also part of the, uh, of the critical summary, but there are some additional more critical questions, more analytical questions that we need to respond to um, in order to make critical summaries of research papers or research reports. And these are some of the questions that we need to respond to if we, wa if we want to do a critical summary of research papers. So the first one is, what is the title of the research report or the research paper? And we do not stop there. The next is, is it a suitable title? Who is the author is, a, is just a descriptive question, and, but you can include it here in the critical summary as well. Then what is the background of the study? And more importantly, is it adequate background? Critical comprehensive literature review has been included. What rationale has been given for the study? And not just this, but also is the rationale well argued and properly presented in order to make um, the, the, the summary critical? Then what if any research gap has been identified? And is the gap analysis well supported by robust arguments? So as you can see that every descriptive question then is further strengthened by um, a more analytical, more critical question when it comes to the critical summary. Then we move on further and critical summary also will have to 
uh, respond to these questions. Is it a suitable design for the study? So there will be questions related to the adequacy of the research design for the study. What could have further strengthened the design or methodology? For example, if you are studying, if you are making a critical summary of a research paper that has adopted, let's say, quantitative research methodology. And um, as a critical reviewer, as someone who wants to make a critical summary of the paper, you might ask this question of the, uh, maybe the researcher or, or of yourself, whether by including um, qualitative research method, methodology or mixed method research design might have strengthened the study. Then what are the strengths and possible weaknesses of the methodological choices in, in the paper? So you are not just including what methodological choices, what methodologies have been adopted for the paper, but also what are the strengths, what are the possible strengths and possible weaknesses of the methodologies that have been adopted in this particular research paper. Then is the study sampling, sample and sampling techniques adequate and in line with the research aims and the nature of the study? Now this is also something that the critical summary uh, of the paper will include answers to this type of question related to the sample and the sampling techniques used in the research paper. Then what research design methodology has been adopted? Um, and are data collection and analysis processes adequately and, uh, adequate and are they clearly articulated? So in a general summary, we might simply say that particular research data collection methods and analysis processes have were adopted. But in more critical summary, what happens is that we need to question the adequacy um, and appropriateness of the particular data collection and analysis methods as well. And so we do not just stop at the description of the data collection and analysis methods. Further, are the validation and authentication processes robust and are clearly laid out in the paper? So someone who is making a critical summary of the research paper will have to critically look at how validity and authenticity of the research process have, have been established. In other words, the validation and authentication process, uh, whether these processes have been clearly presented in the paper and are these adequate. Then have issues related to research ethics been properly followed and described in the paper? Research ethics um, description, inclusion of research ethics are uh, is an important part of research papers and so um, the critical summary should respond to questions related to the adequacy of whether the researchers have followed proper research ethical guidelines. Then are the various sections and subsections of the paper are logically organized? There is clear logical connection. So in other words, does the paper carry a coherent argument from the beginning to, to the end throughout? These are important questions that will be included in the critical summary. Then um, in terms of the academic value, we need to, answer, to, to have uh, answer to the question regarding what is the academic value of the paper in terms of adding to our knowledge regarding the topic or issue. This will also be included in the critical summary. So the critical summary is something uh, that in contrast to the summary which just presents that these were the main findings of the study. This summary will present 
will have to respond to the question regarding the value of the findings or the, the value of the knowledge that the particular research paper claims to have added to our knowledge uh, or to our scholarship. And then the last one is, which might not be the last one, there, there, are, there might be other aspects to the critical summary as well, is that the critical summary should also include questions, uh, uh, answers to questions uh, regarding the, the academic, the, the language of the, of the paper, whether the paper has uh, been written in academically correct language and format. So as you can see, in summary, we generally describe the content and the structure um, and so the what and how of the, uh, of the research paper or the research report. But in the critical summary, there is more, um, uh, we have a more analytical approach. There is more critical thinking involved in it and there is more evaluation. And so this is a summary plus a deeper level of analysis of the content and of the structure and of the language uh, or, and also of the academic value of the, uh, of the research papers. And also regarding the possible weaknesses or gaps um, in the research process and outcomes that are presented in the research paper. Thank you very much.